Aloha, my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing and welcome to part 15 of our CME CNC Rostock Max V 3.2 build series. This will be the final segment of the build process. We're going to do more with it after that, but this is the final part of the build process. So if you haven't been following along, I strongly urge you to pause it here, go up and check out that link in the corner that will take you back, allow you to view the previous episodes so that you can catch up on where we're at in the process. There's of course a link in the manual down below, a link to the manual down below, and there's also links to See Me CNC down there if you're not familiar with their big Delta printers or their little ones or any of their Delta printers and you want to go check them out. So let's do it. So let's do it. Okay, so as I said, we finished up the last segment with the installation of the heat bed and finishing all of our wiring down there. We're going to start up today on step 59 by installing the ball cup arms and then we're going to work through from there. So let me switch cameras and I'm going to show you what we're going to need for the rest of the processes today. Okay, we are going to need the arms and the hinge pieces or the, the spring pieces that hold them on. Uh, following that we're going to need the SE300 hot end assembly here. Tools wise we won't need anything for putting that on. Then we're going to need the clear duet cover as well as the rest of the panel pieces for the frame, the acrylic corner pieces that get put in, the hardware to do that as detailed in the manual, and of course the, the top piece will finally go in and then we're going to end it with putting power on this thing. Tools wise you're going to need your hex wrenches, uh, needle nose pliers and possibly flush cuts as always and a number one screwdriver. Not a lot of tools in this one. So let's kick over to the other camera and we're going to start by assembling these. Okay, so there's a zoomed in view of the skate for you. We're just going to snap these on. It doesn't matter which way they go, but we're just going to snap them on like so. They'll hear a click. We'll let them hang down. And then you're going to need these spring pieces here. And the way that's going to work is you're going to slide it in one side kind of like a key slide it up and it will grab then you'll repeat the process for the other side now the top goes in easy it's when we get down to the bottom that's a little bit harder so I'm going to go ahead and repeat that for the other two towers okay now that those are on we're going to take our SC300 and we're going to look that the whip comes out of this side over here. So we're going to face the connectors that way. You're going to have one of these facing each tower. So you basically you want it so the, no, I'm sorry, um, whip is going to go, yeah. You're going to want it so that you have a dog bone facing each tower. So we're going to go that way. Uh, hang on. But that's unclear. Okay, there we go. What we're going to do is you have the green connector on the back here. That is going to go back towards the Z tower. So let's do that one first. All we're going to do is snap our arms on the same way that we did for the other side. We can do that with all three of them right now and get those in.
there's enough tension from those upper springs to hold it in but now here's where it gets a little bit trickier now we got to put the springs into the lower so it's going to go in the same way you're going to hook the ball in then you're going to pull it with your fingers and stretch it out so it goes in like so repeat that for the other two sides like so okay your hot end is now installed we are making progress now we are going to move on to the PTFE tube and the SC300 connectors okay so we're going to pull this guy down now and let me try to angle this camera back up here to the top of the tube where it comes out. The PTFE tube is going to come out of your easy extruder, go into this right about here, and then it's going to come back out of the PTFE tube right about where that Y split is, right above it. And I'm going to show you the easy way to do that. So at the top of the PTFE tube, it looks like you want to be right about there. It doesn't give an exact dimension but you just want an easy transition into it. So we're going to have our PTFE tube ready to push down into there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my needle nose pliers in, about in the area I want. I'm going to try to loosen that up. And I'm going to manipulate my needle nose pliers into it to open up a hole. Oops, and if it slips out then you got to start over. What we're trying to avoid is actually cutting this. Um, if we can stretch it open enough to get it in, then we don't have to cut this, which means that we don't get fraying. So once you get that hole opened, you can slide your PTFE into it, like so. That should work. and we're going to slide it down the cable. And you can feel as it goes down each step, it can help to sometimes push this, scrunch this up a little bit as you go to help make it easier, but it is pretty slick. If it starts to push out at all, go ahead and give it a little twist to help scrunch it. I'm going to keep sliding that down until you get in the vicinity right above the Y connector. Which I'm down to about here now, so I want to get a couple more inches in. That starts getting a little bit tighter down here, but you want to give yourself the slack you need just by squishing it. Okay, once you get down towards the Y split, right about there, about an inch above it, 12 centimeters or so, you're going to want to basically push it open to give yourself an out and then you're going to want to try to push through enough so that you can grab it and pull it down freely. If you happen to knock loose this guy, just go ahead and pull that back on. Okay, now back up here at the Easy R. Let's tilt that back up here. Our PTFE tube is going to go in here, and you're going to have the collet out. What we're going to use is these little dog bone whip clips. You're going to slide it down over your PTFE cable like that and let it slide down. You're basically going to insert this 
through the hole and you want to push it all the way up until it gets up as high as it can go. You can take your whip clip at this point and bend it over and like so and that is going to go over the black connector over the uh, Bowden connector in there like that to keep this from pulling out that locks that in there okay now you can see we have a little bit of a pull so we can pull that through there like so now we can go back down here and deal with the SE 300 side okay so I'm going to seat the PTFE tube first we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to want to put the whip clip on and let it slide up. Again, you want to make sure this is pushed in there really good though. Um, you do not want that Bowden tube to slide out at this end, especially because that's how you get jams. So that whip clip will lock it in. Now we can take our two connectors You'll have one of them that will go to the larger one and it should plug right in like so. Oops. Slide that up out of the way. It will plug in like so. Then your boot can slide down over the top. And this other one has two connectors on it and they will slide in as well one connector two connector and then a little booty will slide down over the top that is done we are done with the SE380 here if you wanted to you could pull this back up and put the slack kind of balanced at the top but that gives it enough movement to reach comfortably anywhere on the bed Okay, let's move on to our next step. The next step is we are going to install the Dua cover here as well as the two missing covers down on the base, down at the bottom. To do this, I'm actually going to switch cameras and lay this down so that I can show it from the top view down. Now this should be fairly simple. It's just like we did with the other ones for the most part. What I am going to suggest, you'll see the Wi-Fi card sticking out here and the SD card next to it. I'm going to suggest you temporarily pull the SD card out and set it aside. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the Dua cover, this clear piece, and it is going to attach to the back of the uh, plate labeled the Rostock V3 Max. You want to make sure that you get the orientation correctly. The little Wi-Fi signal will be over towards the side. Then we're going to use two of those half-inch screws, the sheet metal screws that are included, to attach it. Okay, that is plastic. It just goes on like that, but it is plastic, so caution you not to over-tighten it. Now this is just going to fit in here like so. Again, you want to make sure that your holes line up. You can get to the USB port. You can see the, uh, the, the reset and the erase buttons through the little holes. And of course the Wi-Fi card behind there. And that you have room to get your SD card in and out. And then we're just going to, just like we did with the other panels, we're going to apply our two screws and tighten that up. Okay, before it gets lost, you're going to want to put that SD card back into the slot. Just go ahead and push it in. And you'll hear it click as it goes into the hole. And we are done with that part. So the top is done other than installing these covers. So let me lay it on its side. And I will show you how to do that and then we'll kind of high speed through the rest of them. You're going to take your flexible panel and inside each of these is a little tab. So you're going to start off with one side tucking it in. Get a little bit of a resistance as you gently bend it. Flex it up as you need to. 
and it's basically just going to snap behind the other one like that and create the bend. So we'll repeat that for the other two corners here and then we'll move down to the bottom applying the last two panels and the corners down there. Okay, last but not least, and you can't see me, but last but not least is we are going to take the top piece, we're going to drop it onto the top, and we are going to turn the clips in just like we did down on the bed to hold that guy on. You can congratulate yourself now. Theoretically, your build is now complete. Yay. Okay, at this point, the next step for us and the final step in the assembly and build process is we are going to apply power. Double check all of your connections before you do that. Make sure everything is sound and of course you've been doing that along the way. I'm going to go ahead and apply power to this. We'll kick over to the other camera and we should see two things when this happens. We should see the LED lights turn on on the SC300 effector and we should see the lights on the Due board fire up at this point. Now there's not firmware installed, so that's just our basics power on, all this wiring is good at this point step. So let's switch cameras and do that. Okay, I have power applied. This is about the best shot I can give you of the Due board here and the hot end both simultaneously in frame. Sorry for all the background mess behind it, but that's about the best I can get both of those. So if everybody's ready, I'm going to flip the switch and we're going to see what happens here. You ready? One, two, three, go. We hear lights come on. I have the LEDs on the effector on. And I see the Dewey board, all the different lights trying to boot up in there. At this point, I think we are good. Okay, so with the build series complete, our next step is to move on to the configuration. Now I'm going to make that its own little mini series starting over with episode one. My reasoning for that is while yes that's the continuation of the build process on this, the manual for one or the other might change. Um, I'm sure CME CNC will take some of the feedback from myself and others since this is a new product and improve the build manual some. and. Likewise, as the firmware evolves for this, I'm sure the firmware manual will evolve. So I don't want one or the other to date or depreciate the other. So we'll see you back here next time for part one of the CME CNC Rostock Max V3.2 configuration guide. All right, let's call it quits there. I'd like to thank everyone who's watched the entire series. If you're building this printer at home, I hope you find it useful to your build process and it helps you along. Please remember to subscribe and hit that bell down below so you're notified as we put out new videos here on the channel. If you're going to be doing any shopping at Matter Hackers or Amazon, I do have affiliate links put down below. I greatly appreciate it if you'd consider using those. It doesn't cost you anything extra and it helps me keep the channel running. Again, a last special thanks to CME CNC for providing this Rostock Max for me to build on the channel here for you guys in this build series. And with that, a big mahalo to everyone and aloha.